Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Five Wards by Frown Clowns and Dragon Egg Games. This is a two to five player game that takes roughly 60 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Five Wards, you are going to be a leader of a gang from a bustling Victorian city, attempting to gain control of all the wards that exist there. As you go along and claim your territories and fight in brawls, you'll be scoring reputation, attempting to get the most by the time the game is over. When the landmark deck is over and you have checked all the wards, hopefully you will become victorious. Don't forget to use your tactics and always make sure that you bolster, bribe, and blast your way through the competition. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. We'll do the setup, how to play, and then my review. To begin the game, the first thing you do is you will take the main game board out and put it within reach of all players. Then have every single player choose a player board. Each player board is going to come equipped with one of each of the resources. There's crowns, money symbols, and bomb symbols. Just put one of your tokens from your bag that you're also going to be getting onto your board. After that, give one player this wonderful hat. That's the starting player of the game. Go ahead and create the landmark deck. The landmark deck is gonna have 14 basic landmark cards and five brawl cards. You'll shuffle them up, place them down on the landmark space, and then deal out five on the areas up above. Next, you're going to be taking these tokens here. One is going to be a copper and the other four are going to be actions that you can take as you move your characters down to the different locations on the wards. When you determine which one the copper is, uh, you're going to be doing so by actually taking this tactic deck. You'll shuffle the deck, place it on the tactic space, and draw one card, putting it into the discard pile. Check the upper right hand side. Whatever that number is, is the card or token that gets flipped over to determine what copper is going to guard what ward in the city. Then the next thing you're going to be doing is taking the victory point tokens. They are going to be front and back. You'll just go ahead and randomly place one in each of the five wards. The last things that you're going to be doing is setting aside any extra tokens, making sure that you have a number of dice equal to the number of players times two plus two. After you've done that, go ahead and place your victory tokens, one for each player, on the rat symbol, and basically, you're ready to begin. Okay, so the beginning of the game, each player is gonna get four tactics cards from the deck. This is your starting hand of cards that you can utilize, and they have a variety of ways you can use them. When you start the game, the player with the top app is the one who's going to go first, and it's gonna go in clockwise, snake-like order, which means if it's me, Bill, and Bob, I'll go, then Bill, then Bob, and because snake-like, instead of going back to me, it will go Bob, Bill, and then back to me, and that will be considered a round. If during a round, a brawl card is on the field, that's only gonna have, we're only gonna do, do one round, in which case you're gonna finish the brawl or settle the brawl. However, normally without a brawl card, once a round is completed, you'll check to see if any of the landmark cards have been filled. And if they have, that will also halt the round. Now, in the game, I will start as the first player. I'll take all these dice, I'll roll all these dice, and then I can go ahead and start by selecting a die. It's basically a draft for dice. If I select a die with, for instance, a mustache, I now have a choice. Either A, I can place one of my mobsters or thugs onto a landmark with that symbol. So for instance, I can do this curtsy cross here and place my dude here on this mustache. In fact, maybe that's what I'll do and take this guy and place it down there. I'll check to see if there's any bonuses provided with placing a guy there, and then I'll end my turn. However, let's say I don't wanna place a guy there. Instead, I can rally. To rally, basically I'm going to be able to get any of these resources here, uh, up to two, or tactics cards. So if I want, I can take two tactics, tactics cards instead of placing a guy down. Or I can take a tactics card and a crown, or a crown and a bomb, or two money. It's really up to you and in any order that you would like. After I've done that, basically taken a die, uh, and then chosen to either place a guy down on that location, or chosen to go ahead and take uh, a rally and gather two resources of any type, I'll pass my turn. And the next player will do the same thing, drafting a die, placing down a thug, or going ahead and rallying. In which case, it'll go back and forth up until it reaches me again. After it reaches me, and then there's a brawl in the field, we're gonna settle the brawl. How that works is pretty simple. On the upper left-hand corner of the brawl is a key. This key is the symbol for the brawl, meaning that each player can participate in the brawl if they would like. And starting with the first player, I will reveal any dice that I have with a key symbol. That's gonna count uh, plus one for each key that I have, as well as any tactic card 
in my hand in the upper uh, left hand corner that has a key as well. I can also place cards down uh, to bluff basically as well. There are certain cards that are wild that will allow me to bluff. Um, and as I place them down, as well as my dice, the next player will get a chance to go. And that player is going to go ahead and place any dice that they have of that symbol and uh, the cards that they want to place down as well. When everybody has done so, everybody is going to reveal. When you reveal, you'll count the number of, the specific one is a key, of keys, whether it be on dice or cards, and add up the total. The highest player is the winner. If there's a tie, you'll split um, the placement. If it's by yourself, then you will take both placements for your thugs. And also, if it's by yourself, you'll gain the card. If it's a three-way tie or a four-way tie, it's basically settled by turn, turn order. Additionally, let's say that the brawl has been completed, or there is no brawl. What's going to happen next is from the top portion here on the landmark deck from left to right, you're going to check to see what cards have been filled. In this case here, let's say that the brawl had been filled and that I won, because why not? I'll take these tokens, place them here, and then basically resolve the card. I won the brawl, so I'll take the card, I'll take these tokens, and I'll place them on any of the locations without a copper symbol that I want. When I place them down, I can then choose to take the action represented on these tiles here. If I do so, great. If not, that's okay too. There's, they each of them have a certain amount of paying of resources to gain additional uh, thugs based on the number of thugs that I have. When I place it, let's say I place it on the green area here, I can choose to do this or not. Then I'll move my guys to the area of the same color of where I chose. Each area has a victory point condition for the end of the game. One could be a point for every two thugs in the area. One could be having five points for the most thugs, three points for the second most, and one point for the third most. And then let's say we just keep going down the line here now. The next area, let's just say, is the Undertaker. And also let's say that, in fact, it did get filled as well. This is resolved just like the Brawl card was. The only difference is now you have a certain amount of options as to what location you can go in. And in clockwise order, players are gonna place the thugs they have placed on this location down. So let's say I am first, I'm green. I only have one, but I'm gonna to get to choose. I can go to Northingham or Northington, or I can go to Winchester. I'll go to Winchester. I won't choose to pay for the ability, and I'll move my character down. Red is gonna go now. And Red can either A, choose to go to Winchester or Northington, as well as choosing whether or not they want to use the abilities. Additionally, note that on your turn when you're putting guys down, you can actually take one of these three actions one time. So you go pay for the resource cost on the tile here, move your guys down, and then choose one of these actions as well. All of these are optional though. The first one is Bolster, which you can pay a crown to move one of your thugs from one ward to another. The next one is Bribe that lets you pay to deploy um, your thugs to the inspector's ward, or you can move a copper from one space to another. There are ways in the game in which coppers are going to be spawned. They are basically little black tokens that will go on the board just like normal players' tokens would, except they're always going to go directly south, wherever location they're at. And the last one is Blast. I can pay a bomb to remove one of every rival's thug from any ward you also occupy. Uh, the rest of these cards will be checked, and oh no, they're all empty. Well, you'll leave those there, you'll take a new landmark and reveal it. Um, you're also going to go ahead and reveal a new tactics card to the discard, and thusly any of the tiles that were used, so in this case here we have red, we have uh, green, and we have yellow. These will get removed, you'll add three new ones, and then you'll check the card, and this one says two. So instead of it being five, this Eastwick is going to be flipped, and then this one here is going to be down. At the end of the round, you'll also check to see who placed the most thugs in each location. And, the, and then you're going to go ahead and place those guys as the ward boss. And in this case here, because there are only these three, these will go there. It only matters round to round. So red can have as many units as they want, but at the end of the day, if, if yellow has four units, in order to beat that area of, of, play, of yellow player, uh, they're going to have to have more units, five or more, in that area for that round. It can't be settled from one round to the next, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that is how the round has been deployed. Then we're going to go ahead and go back. You'll have this player here. It'll be passed to the next player in turn order, and the game will continue just like that. And the game will move on as these landmarks get filled up, moving your characters down onto these areas here, taking the actions, placing them down into the five wards, and choosing to bribe, bolster, or blast if you would like. New landmarks coming out, new tactics cards, and uh, so on and so forth.
Now we didn't talk about tactics cards, but how it works is you can play a tactics card on your turn if you would like, or whenever one says that it allows you to do it. Most of these will bolster your actions, make them better. Some of them will let you reroll your dice. Some of them are going to let you uh, steal one of your opponent's die selections. They're all very random and do a bunch of different stuff that can help you throughout the game. When the landmark deck is empty, basically there are no more cards in the deck here. You'll have one final round. Everybody will play that round out. Then you're going to check who the ward boss is, and you're going to go ahead and settle up with the scoring. Scoring is pretty simple. Each player is going to get six points. They have at least six resources, whether it be in your hand and or on your field, or one point if you have three to five. You'll be scoring points uh, for being the ward boss, one point for each area of the ward boss in, as well as the points for each of the tiles in the sections here. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. Yeah, it's that, it's that simple. That's how five wards is played. So five wards is an area control, dice drafting, action selection game. You're going to be on your turn placing down dudes onto this area here or gathering more resources. Filling up these areas will trigger the round to end and allowing you to utilize your thugs by placing them down into the wards. Getting enough of them to become the ward boss. Scoring points at the end of the game if you're successful in holding that area. Additionally, of course, just placing down thugs thugs in the area are going to score you points as well. Always making sure to use the actions if you can on the little uh, spaces underneath the locations as well as bolster, bribing, and blasting. All of these will help you and the way you'll get the resources is by choosing to rally. Each of these resources will help you in different ways and because these tiles are ever-changing you never know where exactly things are going to be when they have been used. So if somebody uses this one here a new one is going to come out. But you might know next round that these are still going to be there, and so you can prepare for that. You can also prepare for where your guys need to go, and select the specific dice to place your characters down on these cards. Speaking of these cards, these cards will actually give you benefit most of the time. They're called bonus spaces. This one, for instance, says first. And first means that if you place one of your units on any of these four symbols by drafting a die of any of these four symbols, you get to place another unit on that location. Another one says all. All means that if you gather a unit on every single one of these locations, you'll get another one for free as well. This one's a little more challenging than this one, obviously. The last one here I have is last. This is if you're the last player to place down one of your thugs on this area, you'll get an extra thug as well. And then of course you have brawls. Brawls are basically like a little bit of like a combat, so to speak, in this game, where you can save your tactics cards for the brawls to guarantee yourself a victory point at the end of the game. So you should count these as well, but there's only five of them. Um, as well as basically being able to place additional thugs down. This is actually a really cool way of getting extra characters down onto the game board anywhere you want, as long as it's not being blocked by a copper, as well as the ability to um, use those specific abilities that you need to do, and of course gaining a victory point point and utilizing maybe cards that you would never utilize otherwise. All these different actions are fairly similar in how they are functioning, whether it be spending one bomb to turn one of your guys into two guys, or a bomb to turn two of your guys into four guys. Basically, every combination of one to two or two to four. There are some differences in the deck, I believe. Um, making sure that you can never go to the locations that are protected by the copper, but remember every round this little trigger and a new location will open up and another one will close down. In certain cases, you're gonna see cops that are gonna pop out onto the field and when they do, at the end of the game, for each copper in each space, anybody who isn't the ward boss is going to lose one of their thugs in that area as well. So don't forget that. They're very, they can be kind of nasty. And because you can move them around the game board, it can, it can affect gameplay as well. This is a pretty quick game. It's pretty straightforward. Once you get the hang of it in the first round, you know what you're trying to do. You know what wards you're trying to go to complete. Um, oh, also to note, I almost forgot that depending on what color you are. So for instance, if I'm the gorilla gang here, you can actually earn two more more points if you're able to control the specific ward of Eastwick. So if you're the ward boss at the end of the game, you can get bonus points. But it'll be challenging because players will know that you specifically are going for that area, and they'll probably try and take it from you just so you can't score those extra points. Every point in this game matters. One point is actually very, very good. Two points is really, really good. So 
any extra points players can get can mean the difference. There's always going to be a very close game in five wards. You're never knowing who's going to be winning this game. You have kind of an idea as the game goes on, but because there's swings in this game, there's tactical maneuvers you don't think players are going to make based on where they can go in the different locations or when brawls come up, things change throughout the game and it's a lot of fun. It works really well. Like the amount of randomness in this game with the amount of strategy is a nice combination. Sometimes a card might come up that you don't want to get. It happens or tactics card but most of all of them are fairly balanced as to how you can use them and some of them are going to be more useful to you than others. Being able to re-roll the remaining dice can be useful unless you already have dice that you need in which you can keep this card and use it for a brawl if you want. Being able to when you brawl make this champion icon anything you want is excellent but it's so powerful for a brawl it's not good for anything else. Or being able to start to start or end your turn move one of your thugs from a landmark to any unoccupied non-bonus space on an adjacent one. That's really, really good, uh, in which case you could basically have your guy in a specific location that you really don't want to place him in, but maybe you want to block your opponents, and then you can actually switch him to a new location. Oh, and look, I'm the first person there, so I get an actual bonus on my first location. So each of the tactics cards is very, very powerful. Having resources is important in this game, being able to kind of boost up yourself as you move to different locations. And then these extra actions are just fun to utilize. They can actually help you in getting an edge on a player who's just slightly ahead, and they can help you move your units to where you need to go or remove coppers as they hit the, the field. Overall, Five Wards is a lot of fun. It's a beautiful looking game. I love the game board. I love how simple it is to track and where to place your units. The tactics cards have a great art. Your character boards, while simple, give you everything you know. It tells you your color. It tells you what area you need to control and how many points you'll get. The three different resource types you'll have. And then of course, at the end of the game, if you have a certain number of resources, whether it be cards or these tokens here, you can score additional points. And your board does that as well. It tells you on this location here where you can score the points, uh, the locations of the board bosses. I say the one kind of confusing thing in this game, which I probably maybe didn't explain very well, is the ward boss. In a round, when you place your units down, so we'll just say, I'm gonna try and give you an extra example during the review, because I think it's actually really important and why it's a little confusing. If we have yellow here, and so, so yellow, red was here, and then yellow goes from some location to, to yellow and places their guys down, and they have three. In this case, it would move here, and then we'll have two red. Let's say on the next round that red places another two units. Red now has four units total on the space, which is one more than the ward boss, but because they only placed two units on the field this round, it's not gonna be enough to beat the three units that the ward boss placed on the previous round. Red would have to actually place on the same singular round these four units to take yellow off and place them over here. And that's the main complication of the game and trying to situate the units to be like, okay, these were already used, they're not currently used this round, so I'm gonna put these guys over here, etc., etc., etc. Like. Otherwise, though, the game is very straightforward, very simple to play. At the end of the game, you're not using this until the very end. We're going to go ahead and keep track of the points, and it's usually very, very close. The combat, while meaty and gritty, does not actually is not actually really mean to other players. The most mean you're probably going to be, other than maybe just beating somebody at a brawl, is basically taking over a space that they want to take over, a spot they want, or a location that they want to go to. And it's all very fair and balanced in how mean it is, and then how, like, lighthearted and fun it is as well. I really, really like this game. This game was a lot of fun. We played with four players multiple times and I didn't play the two player variant. Um, I, I believe it says two to four in the box, but I think it's a two to five player game. So I could have played five had I, I actually checked the rule book instead of the box here. But overall as a four player game, it's a lot of fun. I imagine this game probably plays really well three, four and five players, and I don't know for two players. That's like a whole separate ball game. But yeah, Five Wards is a lot of fun. It's really cool, great components, great artwork, and for a prototype, I'm very excited to see what the game finally looks like at the end. But yes, stamp of approval. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Five Wards. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there is a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. Or if it's not ready yet, there's a link where you can check out the website and find new details of when it's coming out. You can also go ahead and check out the website Unfiltered Gamer, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and watch our streams on Wednesdays and Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. And of course, Whatnot is on Wednesdays at 6.30 as well. You can also go ahead and if you would like, subscribe. If you think we've earned your subscription and you watch more than one of our videos here and you notice that I am burning up in the hot, hot room because it's like a hundred and something degrees outside, 
can't have the AC on because then you guys can't hear me really well. So this, uh, that's why, that's why. Then subscribe, maybe I've earned it, all right? Thank you so much, guys. And as always, I need some AC, but I'll visit you in the five wards next time.